Hey everybody, and welcome back to the best Linux channel out there, Byte of Linux. So today, I'm going to be looking at and installing Deepin OS. After that, I'm also going to be checking out some of the features and showing you around it. From what I've heard, the pictures and the videos, Deepin OS is one heck of a distribution. I mean, it just looks really beautiful and just appealing. So let's go over to the Deepin OS homepage. So that is deepin.org. And now one thing to note about Deepin OS is that it is developed in China and based in China. So some stuff might look a little bit weird. The text might be a little bit different, but nevertheless, it's still really beautiful. So right off the bat here, we can see that the website has some nice animations here. And now before I go over to the download page, I'm going to hop over to DistroWatch. The link is right here and see some things about it. So yep, it was originally based off of Ubuntu, but a few years ago they had a full rewrite and now it's based off of Debian. So it is originated from China, like I said. It does support both 32-bit and 64-bit systems. Now that's no surprise here, it is based off of the Deepin desktop environment. The release model is fixed and it is pretty popular. It's currently number 9 on DistroWatch and it gets 900 hits per day. So let's go back over to the home page and click download. Now you can see that there are three links here. The first one is the regular download page. The second one is release notes. And here you can see information and features that were introduced with each version of Deepin. Now the third link is system update. And I guess this just gives some information about updating your systems. So let's go back over to the official download page. Now one thing that I did notice is that there is no torrent version available on the official page here, but I did find out that if you look deep in OS torrent download, then you will find one over here at linuxtracker.org, but it's kind of dumb that it's not actually on the page right here. So I'm just going to do a direct download then, and use this link right here, and now there's also these other links over here if you cannot access here, like SourceForge, Mega, and Google Drive. So right here, you can actually see that it is 2.2 gigabytes, and that's expected with a heavy desktop environment like Deepin. And now I'm going to put this on a USB drive and then boot it up. So when you're booting up Deepin on your computer and you see this, simply use your arrow keys and navigate to Install Deepin and click Enter. So here is Deepin fully booted up, and as you can see, unlike other distributions, you cannot run Deepin OS as a live user. So you have to install it straight away. So the first step here is to select a language, so I'm just going to use English. Now next, you want to create your user account or profile. So just enter in your username, and then your PC name, your computer name, a password, and then make sure to confirm your password. Once all that's ready, you can hit next, or you can also select your profile picture or user avatar. You have a good amount over here. I'm just going to select this one. Hit next. And now, here is where you want to select where you want Deepin to be installed. So I just have a free empty hard drive right here. And now if you want to manually partition it and set the exact partitions, you can use this advanced category right here. But I'm just going to use the default installer like this. Once you click it, it will show this. And click Start Installation. Now here's kind of like a warning or like a recap of what's happening. So following operations will be executed. Please confirm. Okay, continue. And it's installing. So the installer just finished for Deepin. And you see a beautiful screen like this. And we can just click Experience Now. And it will reboot. And from here, we can start the review part of the video. So Deepin has booted up, and this is the login screen. You can see the avatar, your username, and then the blurred background of your actual background. So I'm just going to enter my password here, and it's logging in. So Deepin has fully logged me in now, and my, it is very beautiful. So at the bottom, we can see that there is a dock, and now the first thing I'm going to do is take a look at some of the applications that came pre-installed. 
So if you click on this button right here, it's the launcher, and it'll show you all of the applications. So the default web browser is Google Chrome. It comes with the WPS Office Suite. And this is probably because WPS is Chinese. Probably not going to include LibreOffice. You have Deepin File Manager, Skype, Deepin Store, which is the software center. Spotify, interesting. Deepin Movie and Deepin Image Viewer. Steam, Screenshot Utility. Thunderbird Mail as your default mail client. Terminal, some printing utilities. Control Center, Deepin Calendar, Calculator, Font Viewer, Driver Manager. This thing, I'm not sure what that is. GDEBI, Pack and Solar, okay. Gparted for managing your disks. Archive Manager, Crossover, also not sure what that is. Deep in Music, Screen Recorder, Foxit Reader for looking at PDFs, and Voice Recorder. Great. So let's first take a look at the store. Let's launch it up and see what it looks like. So we have this, and it kind of reminds me of, it really reminds me of the uh, Chrome Web Store. Just really does. And then you have the categories on the side over here. So let's just install a basic application. Let's see. It looks like we also have editors here like JetBrains and Eclipse. So I'm going to go over to graphics and try to install GIMP. Okay, it's right here, the first option. And if we click on it, we have some screenshots, reviews at the bottom, and then on the top you have version and download size. So let me hit install and see what happens. Now at the top here, if you click on this spinning thing right here, it will show you what's going on right now, the speed of the download, and how much of it is finished. And you can also pause it from here and cancel it as well. So everything is fully installed now, and I got a notification here at the top saying GIMP installed successfully. So let's try to launch it from here. I'm just going to hit open, and good, here it is. So that opened up successfully, and everything went well with the installation. So it's good to know that that works. Okay, so now let's look at Deepin Terminal. Okay, nothing much here, just a regular terminal. Then we have Control Center, so let's see what this is. Now it looks like this is actually the settings application, and it's kind of interesting how they have it slide in from the side, kind of like the budgie desktop environment. So you have your accounts here, display, you can set resolution brightness, Default Applications, Personalization, and let's actually look at Theme here. Okay, so it comes with two themes, the dark and light version. And in Icon Packs, you have Deepin, Flatter, that's like a third-party one, actually called Love now, and C, so let's just click Flatter, okay, that changes properly, and you have your default um, cursors. And then you have other stuff like Networking, Sound, Time, and at the bottom, you have your system information. So you can see that I'm currently running Deepin 15.4 desktop. This is the latest version. It's actually the RC version. So everything is the newest here. And then let's look at Crossover finally. And this looks like it lets you run Windows applications on Linux. So it looks kind of like Wine. Great. So overall, there aren't too many applications pre-installed, though I would have liked the option to not include some of these, like CHMC or Steam, which I'm probably not going to use, but still not too minimal. So now the next thing I'm going to do is do a bit of light customization, and then also look at the system monitor. I'm really interested to see how much this is using. So let's see. If we right click on the background and click set wallpaper, we have all these options here at the bottom. It looks like everything works properly here. And when you click it, it gives you the option to either set it only on desktop only on or only on lock screen. So let's just use this one. It's really pretty. I'll just use only desktop. And there it is. So now let's look at the performance. So let's go to our launcher here and then system monitor okay so we have all these services here and looks like the most resource heavy service that's currently running is deepin wm i am pretty sure that's deepin window manager and that's using 500 megabytes then next you have dde launcher which is probably the launcher right here so let's look at the overall usage 
So on memory, it's currently using 1.3 gigabytes. Now that is really high for a Linux computer. I mean, 1.3, you're not going to be able to run this on anything that's less than 2 gigabytes of RAM. Because, I mean, it's using a lot. And it's also using 100% of my CPU. And something that's interesting is that it also used some of my network. I mean, it's showing that 52, 56.2 megabytes received and 1.2 megabytes sent. So I'm kind of wondering what was sent there. Hmm. And that's about it. So this is probably the most resource-intensive distribution I've used. But that's due to the fact that there are many nice animations. So let's just do a little bit of other stuff. So at the bottom, I'm wondering how to power this thing off. I guess you just click on this and then you have all these options right here. Just escape there. If we click this green button, it shows us all our workspaces. And if I just click here, it will bring me to the next one. And it looks like you can actually change the wallpaper of each individual workspace. That is pretty cool. Let's just set this to that and put it on. And then if we go back to our original workspace. Good. So everything there went smoothly with no issues. Okay, everyone. That's going to be it for this video. Now, this distribution, it really isn't there yet. I mean, it's very buggy. It uses way too much memory and CPU. I mean, 1.3 gigabytes is a little bit crazy. And I'm not really sure about the security of the system either. As you can see in the network usage, it was sending something back and forth. And I'm not exactly sure how this remote assistance thing works either. And one other thing is that I really wish they allowed you to select the applications that are going to be installed on top of the base applications, you could say, because I'm probably not going to use some of these programs here. And I mean, it's a little bit bloated. So yeah, it's not there yet. It needs a little bit more work to be a stable and daily driver ready distribution. But one thing is very sure about this and that it is very good looking. But I mean, looks aren't everything. So yeah, I'll leave it at that. Guys, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more awesome Linux videos. And we're really close to 100 subscribers, so make sure you do that. And as always, thanks for watching.